Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to today's lesson in current events uh, regarding immigration. Our essential question for this unit is going to be what are the issues caused by global immigration? So if you are taking Cornell notes you will write that as your essential question across the top of your notes. And I will give you time to do that before I switch the last slide. So our first left side question today is going to be what is the global context? And by context what we mean is what is the global situation with immigration? Uh, we live in the United States, we watch the news, we know immigration is getting talked about a lot on the news, but it's not just getting talked about in terms of issues in, of immigration, in terms of how they affect the United States. It's also getting talked about around the world. Uh, so let's talk about that a little bit. Immigration is an issue not just in the United States, but worldwide. And that is something that after this unit, I hope you understand. Uh, the issue has been given attention because the policies of the Trump administration have put it in the news almost every day since President Trump took office in January of 2017. But it was an issue before President Trump was president, um, and it will be an issue after President Trump is president. It's not just about President Trump, but he has changed a lot of policies and he has said a lot of things which have drawn attention to the issue. Uh, immigration is also an issue in southern Mexico, and we are actually going to look at that um, just to give us a broader perspective of how immigration is not just an American issue. Um, we're also going to look at how immigration is a huge issue in Europe. Um, in the last few years, it has been a major issue in Europe and is an issue in almost every European election. Um, we are going to take a look at that as well. So what I want you to understand by the time we get done with this entire union is that immigration is an issue anytime there is a gap between rich and poor. Um, we're gonna go into that in a great level of detail, but this is kind of your broad overview. And I'm going to go ahead and change the slide. So the first thing we're going to look at is what causes immigration. Um, we've already learned our immigration vocabulary, so some of this will be review, but that's okay. Um, people don't just immigrate because they wake up one day and feel like it. There are reasons why people immigrate. So let's take a look at those. First of all, Immigration is the result of what we call push and pull factors. Um, some things push people out of their country and some things pull people towards a new country. A push factor is something that causes someone to actually want to leave their home country. Um, if you're born somewhere and you grow up and you're happy, chances are you're not going to want to leave. So there's got to be something that makes you want to leave, and we will be taking a look at that. A pull factor is something that makes another country attractive as a place to live and work. Um, if you want to leave your home country, the decision of where you go to is going to be determined by pull factors. What is it about a country, a prospective country, that you're thinking of moving to that makes it an appealing place to consider moving to. Um, these factors exist worldwide and not just in North America. That's something I'm going to be emphasizing over and over again. Um, the immigration issues we have in America are similar to immigration issues in other parts of the world, and it is not just an American issue, and that's very important to understand. And with that, we're going to change the slide. So let's look at some examples of push and pull factors. And this is going to be largely a slide of 
um, just discussion. But your left side question is, what are some examples? Uh, first of all, this is a nice graphic, so I didn't reinvent the wheel here. I just went ahead and put it into my slideshow. Uh, push factors. Uh, if you are living in a country where you can't get a job or the job you have can't feed your family, um, that is something that could push you out of your country. Um, if you don't feel safe, uh, if there's a lot of crime where you're at, if there's a civil war, um, drug cartels, if, if, if your daily life is filled with anxiety about whether or not you're safe, that is something that could make you want to leave. Lack of services. Do you have running water where you've grown up? Do you have uh, medical care? Do you have paved roads? Do you have um, electricity? Those are all services um, that in a modern world people consider to be uh, essential. Uh, are you surrounded by poverty in your home country? Is it a very poor country? Is it a developing country? Uh, one of our vocabulary words. Um, what is the agriculture like in the country that uh, you would be coming from? Are crops failing? Is there drought? Um, is it hard to get food? Uh, those are all things that could make people want to leave. Is there a civil war? Is there violence? Is it, is it not safe? Are you in the line of fire um, in a situation that you really don't want to be a part of? Um, that could definitely make you want to leave your country. Hazards. Um, is your country um, a possible victim of global climate change and sea level rise like the uh, islands uh, in the Pacific Ocean? Is it uh, subject to natural disasters? Um, is it isolated? Is it far away? Is it hard to get things there because of how far away it is? Um, all of these are things that could make people want to leave their home country. So what would make people want to move to a new country? Well, if you're having difficulty getting a job where you come from and you're moving to a country that has lots of jobs and pays well, that could make you want to move to that country. Um, if you're living in a country that's unsafe and you're moving to a country um, that is relatively stable and safe, that could be very appealing. If you're leaving a country that doesn't have electricity, running water, medical care, and paved roads, Moving to a country that has those things could definitely be appealing. Um, if you're leaving a country where there's a high level of poverty and you're moving to a country that has a high level of wealth, that could be something that you find appealing. Um, if food and drought are issues in the country you come from and you're moving to a country that does not have those issues, that has enough food for its people and maybe has so much food that it sells that food, to other countries, that might be somewhere where you want to live. Um, maybe the country you're moving to is politically more stable. In other words, there's not a civil war. Um, it's stable and predictable and safe. And, you know, maybe you have friends and family in the country that you're moving to and the country you're leaving, you don't. Now, you may want to live near your friends and family. These are all things that could make somebody want to move to a new country. Ladies and gentlemen, this is basically an introduction. Um, we're going to look at specific examples. Um, we're going to look at immigration in the American context. We're going to look at immigration in the European context. Um, we're going to talk about how Mexico deals with immigration. And we're going to look at some other examples as well. So this is just your broad overview. Um, if you can write a brief summary at the bottom of your notes, that would be fantastic. But uh, coming up in our next lesson will be um, some more detail. This is kind of your 35,000 foot overview. Um, we're going to get closer to the ground level and, and see what immigration is really like. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Blumenthal signing off until next time on the Waldo Middle School Social Studies YouTube Network.